Earthworms eat dead leaves and old roots in the soil. They use their muscles to wriggle through the ground. And as they munch the soil, they make burrows. The tunnels they make breathe new air into the ground. When it rains, the water soaks into the holes they make in the soil. So the more earthworms we have in our soil, the more rain gets soaked up. This allows plants to grow as they have more to drink. Worms also make lots of worm poo, which the plants love too. Because the water gets soaked up into the ground rather than running across it, it can even help to slow the flow of water into our rivers. This could help stop flooding. Hi, I'm Sally from Duncatcher Rivers Trust and today we're going to be doing a worm survey to find out about the worms that live in your garden. So what we're going to need for our worm survey is you're going to need a tape measure because we're going to be digging a test pit. You're going to need a spade or a trowel to dig with, a pair of gloves to protect your hands. You're also going to need a Tupperware for your worms and some water to give them a rinse because we don't want them to dry out. Last but not least, you're going to need some mustard. What we need to do first is to dig a hole that's 20 centimetres wide, 20 centimetres long and 10 centimetres deep. So you can mark it out first and then lift up the soil. Let's see what we've got. So we've already got one little worm here that's come out of the soil. So what we need to do, because they might be a bit muddy, is give them a little bit of a wash. There we go, and we'll pop them into our container. We can be quite gentle with them. Really good look through the soil because there might be some hiding. step is to extract the deep burrowing earthworms and we have a special trick for this and this is why you need your mustard. So what we need is a spoon of mustard in about 800 millilitres of water and this isn't toxic to the worms it just causes a change in their environment which makes them move away from the soil and up to the surface. What we're going to do is pour the water into our worm pit and time for up to three minutes. Have a little look and see what you can find. Sadly I don't think we've got any deep burrowing worms in our garden but we've got loads of surface dwelling worms. These ones tend to be a little bit redder in colour whereas the deeper burrowing earthworms tend to be pale and often a bit bigger. Earthworms don't have arms, legs or eyes. They have a rounded head which you can see here at the front and at the end they have a more pointed, thinner tail. Adult earthworms have a saddle and this is where the eggs come from. Earthworms are both male and female, they're hermaphrodite. You can see that the body is made up of segments and it uses these different muscles to move through the soil. There are 27 different kinds of earthworm in the UK and they come in all different colours and sizes. The biggest worm in the UK that was ever found was 40 centimetres long. If you pop a worm on a piece of paper and shine a torch under it for a second, you can actually see the soil moving through the worm. Worms love to eat soil. The next step is to count your worms. Have a look and see which ones have a saddle and which ones don't have a saddle. You can count how many they are for each group. For the adult worms you found, for the ones that do have a saddle, you can divide these up further counting the green worms you found, the stripy worms you found, the red ones you found, and the pale ones you found. You can record these numbers in the recording sheet from the Opal survey that you can see in the description. Hi, 
put some soil back into your pit and put the worms back in. This is a great opportunity to see them wiggling and burrowing back into the soil they call their home. Then you can cover them back up. And don't forget to put the turf back on.